So hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do a really simple craft um, and I think I need to show you what it is. Oh, let's make these cards out. These are some of the cards I use with um, the children that I work with. So <clears throat> sometimes if you're playing a game that has lots and lots of cards it's a bit tricky to hold them all in your hand if you've got all of these and you're trying to sort them out. So um, I'm grateful to my sister who showed me this little thing. Um, so this is what we're going to make today. And what is it, you ask? Well, you simply pop your cards in like this. And these are really good for people who um, maybe find it difficult to hold things for a long time because then you're just holding one thing and it's um, slightly padded so it feels kind of nice and uh, I'm going to show you how to make them so let's get started so let's have a look at the supplies we need to make one of these card holders you are going to need some batting of some kind this is actually um, curtain lining material called bump. Um, it's slightly fleecy and I don't know if you can see how thick it is, but it just gives a slightly padded feeling. And this is really cheap. Um, so you're gonna need two of those. You're going to need a template. And here's my template. I just cut this out of card. And um, you're gonna need two CDs old CDs. These are ones that we used for a project that kind of didn't get off the ground. And you can see that I've drawn a circle that's about an inch bigger than a CD. You can do it slightly bigger again. And I think if I was going to do another template, I probably would make it maybe half an inch bigger. So two of those, two of those. One template, scissors, a pen to draw around your template, and then fabrics. So I've got a selection that I've already cut out. And in fact, this one I've already made into a card holder. And you can see I've used buttons in the middle. And so you're also going to need a jar of buttons the project and you're going to need a needle and strong thread so this is the thread that I'm using it's um, Gutterman thread and it is strong thread it's not going to break easily um, you could also use embroidery floss that would work and anything that is a strong thread so let's show you how we get started. I won't show you how to cut these out because you just draw around your template and cut them out. I have had oh, there's my needle. I have had somebody who wants some out of this fabric. Um, you don't have to iron the fabric. You can if you want to, and. Um, I'm not going to worry about it because it doesn't really matter too much. It gets it does get stretched. I do like to get the best use out of my fabric as well. So is that going to fit in there? Yes. Now the good thing about this is that. It doesn't matter if you're not 100% accurate. It really doesn't. And although I'm using CDs for this project, you could use really stiff card. Um, you could, in fact, even use cereal boxes if you layered your card up a bit maybe stuck two of them together. Disadvantage of using cards obviously is that it, it, they might bend more easily whereas with the CDs 
or DVDs, you'll know that it does take a lot to actually break them. See, I wasn't 100% accurate there. There we go. So, when you're cutting your thread, I do like to do it doubled up, which may seem a bit of a waste, but to do it and yeah. kind of go around and make sure I'm going to have enough thread. To go all the way around. I should have got some ordinary thread out so you could see the difference in thickness. You just want the thread that really isn't going to break very easily. In the jar over here, I've got some ordinary thread. So you can see the difference in the thickness there. So once you've threaded your needle, sorry, you're going to take your piece of batting or um, bump or whatever you're going to use. Uh, you could use felt as well. You've got some cheaper felt. If I'm doing these myself, I don't always bother to pin it, but if you're a bit unsure of your stitching, just a couple of pins is all that's needed. I have seen people do these on the machine as well, but to be honest, quite therapeutic just to do it by hand. And now you want to put a running stitch about half a centimetre in from the edge. And you will see how quickly this comes together. And you can do quite a few stitches all at once and pull it through. And you don't need to worry about it bunching up because that's what we're going to want it to do in a minute anyway. You can see I'm not being totally accurate about how far from the edge I am. And I'm literally just running a stitch all the way around the edge. The tricky part of this is when you put the buttons on, I think anyway. Um, and I found a couple of different ways to do that. One of the things with a longer thread is it does sometimes get tangled up as well, but just keep going. And there we are, back to the beginning. So that's how quick that is. Now I would take the pins out before you forget. And then I just pat it down, get your CD and pop it inside. And you do want to try and get the, the rim about the same all the way around and this is why I said I would probably do a slightly bigger template if I was doing this again because um there's a finished one it does work oh sorry my hair in that one it does work it's fine 
um, but I think just a little bit extra leeway would probably be beneficial. Anyway, then you just pull it tight. And then I just put a holding stitch in here. And nut it off. through one thread. And there's one side done. So now you do the same again. I suppose I should just say make sure that they sew the batting onto the wrong side of the fabric. And that's just the one that wasn't quite pressed properly. Don't worry too much about it. And I don't, I'm, I'm not going to waste this thread. I'm going to use that when I come to sew the buttons on. So you might be wondering why I'm making these. We've got a craft fair with the brownies this weekend. So we are going to be making, well, I'm going to be making some of these to sell on the craft fair stall to raise some money. And it doesn't use very much fabric at all. And I'm off to the knitting and stitching show in Harrogate tomorrow. So I will do a little video of the goodies I find. It's a fun show to go to because you see lots of different crafts and textiles and what have you. And there's usually some people off the sewing bee who do some presentations and talks and you can do workshops. I haven't booked any workshops this time, mainly because there wasn't any left by the time I decided I wanted to book a workshop. Although sometimes on the day you can go along and there's been cancellations, so there's spaces. I did think I was going to be buying a new sewing machine, or at least looking at them. But yesterday I decided to treat my sewing machine to a bit of a clean and a bit of oil and a new needle. And it had been quite a while since I replaced the needle, so um, it's now running like a dream and you really wouldn't believe it was the same machine. It was sounding like a right old banger before. <laughs> um, really loud and clunky. And now it sounds really quiet and smooth and it's not bunching up the stitches underneath. It's um, not getting stuck on thicker bit of, bits of fabric and it just looks like everything's running nice and smoothly. And I don't have an expensive one. It's just um, one I got in Aldi a few years ago. It does basic stitches and quite a few different pattern stitches if you want them, but I, I mainly just sew straight stitches so it's not a big deal for me. So if you don't get it completely equal the first time you can just fiddle around a bit with it. I 
then if you find that most of the stitches are gathered at the end bit, just move the gathers round. You do kind of want to get them as equally spread out as you can because you don't want a big lump all in one place. So there we have it. We've got the two outside bits done. And I'm not quite sure how long that took, but I know it wasn't very long. It's highly unlikely that these stitches would ever come undone unless you were really treating these badly. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna, I don't know if it's long enough for the buttons. I'm going to thread the other needle, uh, not the other needle, the other thread back in. So once you've got that, the next tricky bit is choosing your buttons. So there we are. You see, the fact it wasn't ironed hasn't really made a big difference. Let's choose some buttons. So, let's choose some buttons. It is nice to have two the same. Although you don't have to have two the same, obviously. were off a coat I used to have years ago. So we choose those. One thing just to check is that you can get your needle through both buttons. So this one with the perfume bottles, you don't have to do this but I'm a bit fussy. I did try to make sure that the bottles were the same way up it really doesn't matter though. I did the same on this one. This fabric I got in either Aldi or Lidl. It was one of their fat quarter bunches and it's got the different sewing things on it, which I thought was quite cute. But again, I've tried to kind of keep it level. I wasn't quite a hundred percent, but I don't think people. So to add the buttons on, you keep a long enough tail here that you can end up knotting it at the very end and then you go through the middle don't pull that too tight because otherwise you'll lose your knot and then through the middle of this one And then you go back through again and do a little securing, a couple of securing stitches just to hold it together. Like that. And now you can actually finish there if you want. You can see there why I said I would probably do it, the circles a bit bigger because you can see the stitches, but like I said before, I don't think it really matters too much. And then you sew your buttons on. These have got really huge holes, these buttons. And then you want 
to go through just a couple of times to secure them. like that so they're not going to come off anytime soon and then I cut the thread at the needle end and I just pulled that bit there that could be a bit tricky with some of the buttons that you use I did do a little knot there that I didn't really need and then you can tie these ends all together. I usually just do a couple of knots to secure them. I should have probably left a bit of a longer thread. That's got a couple of knots in it. And a couple of knots in there. And then just to finish it off all together, just knot these together. And then I trim one end of threads and there. And just kind of wind it round. And there we go. One card holder. And there's the cards gone. Here we go. Just like that. And the beauty is the other people can't see what you're doing and you can shuffle them around as much as you want. Over time it might, might become a bit loose but obviously you just need a needle and thread to kind of pin it back together again, stitch it back together. So there we go. An easy DIY card holder. Let me know if you have a go at making these and thanks very much for watching.